This is James Dean Designs and today we are making the spoil board for the Saint Smart Genmitsu 4040 Pro. Hello and welcome to another episode. If you're new to the channel, Love Laser or CNC, make sure you hit that little subscribe button down there in the corner to get all the latest tips, tricks, tutorials and reviews. Now, as mentioned, we are making a spoil board for this machine, the Science Smart Gen Mitsu 4040 Pro. If you are new to CNC, let me just take a quick second to explain exactly what a spoil board is. Machines often come with these MDF beds and people believe these act as a spoil board, but they actually don't. They are just a bed. They have little metal inserts in and if you cut through into one of those inserts, you're going to cause damage to your machine and the bits. So basically what we do is we put an additional piece of MDF on top and this then becomes our spoil board. We surface it, which takes a thin layer off the top and it guarantees everything runs flat and parallel with the X and Y axis. It also means we can cut through material without having to worry about hitting those little metal inserts. So it's safer all round and we get better results. Now, all the files I will be using in today's video, there will be links to them in the description area below. So definitely check that out and you can literally use everything that I'm doing in the video today. But for now, let's crack on and start making this spoil board. So to complete today's task, this is our shopping list. Now, for the purpose of today, I'm doing everything with the standard 60 watt spindle. I will provide the files to do this with a 65 millimeter diameter router, such as the Makita as well and I'll tell you at various points throughout the video where you need to position things slightly differently. But to begin with you need a piece of MDF. This needs to be 400 millimeters deep, 435 millimeters wide and 6 millimeters thick. Now to hold this down to the bed we're going to be using blue tape and CA glue. You can also use double sided tape as well if you prefer. Now to find, find the center point on the MDF you're going to need a straight edge and a pencil so we can mark that up. Then to cut the holes for where the clamps go we're going to be using a 2 flute 1 8 end mill bit. To surface the spoil board at the end and make sure it's all flat we're going to be using surfacing bits with a quarter inch diameter and let's take a closer look at these now. Now surfacing the MDF essentially means taking a very thin layer off the top to guarantee everything is perfectly flat. Now in order to achieve this we are going to need to fit a surfacing bit. These typically have a quarter inch shank so in order to do that you will need an ER11 quarter inch collet insert. Now I'll put links to everything I'm talking about in the description area below the video but basically this will allow you to fit one of these bits into the standard 60 watt spindle. Now with these bits there are different types available. This one here is a fairly cheap one off somewhere like Amazon, probably costs around $20 and it will do the job okay but it can start to blunt fairly quickly. Something like this one over here, as we can see, it looks a little bit more complex and it basically cuts with multiple blades. It is a better type of bit, but ultimately it does cost a little bit more. This one is from Speedtool, and I think this is around $40, but again, I'll post links to everything in the description area below. The files that I'll be using today will basically work with either size bit. I'm allowing for different variations and a bit of tolerance within it. Start by applying strips of blue tape in between all of the holes on the bed itself. If you do go over a hole, like there are a couple on the front here, just use a craft knife, cut them out, and ultimately it just means it's a little bit cleaner later on. Next, we're going to bring in the piece of MDF. Now to align the blue pieces of tape, what we basically want to do is get this sitting roughly in the center, bring in a pencil and let's just pencil mark where that is on all pieces of tape so we can align them up. Do this on the front and then do the same on the back as well. Flip it over and apply your pieces of tape. So at this stage, you should have lots of blue tape on your bed and on the underneath side of your spoil board. I should have mentioned earlier, it's worth putting an F and a B on the um, spoil board itself so you know the orientation for the front and the back so you don't get it the wrong way around. Now these don't need to be perfectly straight, we're just going to put some glue down the middle of them. The other thing I should point out is make sure your tape is perfectly flat. If you have any wrinkles or creases in it, pull it back up and lay it out. You want it to be as smooth as possible. Now at this point, we're going to bring in the CA glue 
We're going to put a line of glue down each piece of tape, spray the activator on the MDF, and essentially stick all this down together. I haven't stuck this down yet, but I just wanted to show you something. We need this to sit about 12 millimeters in from the edge, about a half inch. And this conveniently lines with the edge holes for the bolts holding it down to the frame. So basically when you stick this down, you're aiming for this um, piece of MDF just to sit right on the edge of those bolt holes. Now, if you are using the Makita, you basically need to bring your board all the way to the front when you stick it down. Obviously there's a difference in the diameter and therefore the overhang is slightly different on the Makita. So Makita at the front or 65 millimeter router at the front. And if you're using the standard 60 watt, you want it about 12 millimeters back just in line with the outer edge of those holes. So with the board stuck down at this point, you can go around with a craft knife and cut all the excess blue tape off if you want. But the most important step now is to find at the center of the board. To do this, we draw two diagonal lines from corner to corner, going opposite direction. And where they cross in the center, that will be the center of the board. So we'll get that done now. And that gives us the center of the board in order to start both of our next cutting jobs. Next, you'll want to install the 1 8 two flute end mill that I showed you in the shopping list at the start. And ultimately, we want to get that sitting on the dead center of the cross that we have just drawn and basically just touching the surface of the material. So the bit is now sitting in the dead center of the cross that we have drawn, and it is also just touching the surface of the MDF. Now, one thing I should point out, in order to make this work and to guarantee I can cut through these six millimeter MDF, I've had to lower the spindle down with in the holder by quite a bit. Now we will see that the um, holes for the uh, ventilation are now covered. However, there is a breathing gap around this ring, so it should be okay. And obviously once we've finished this job, we can potentially raise it back up just to give it the maximum ventilation. But you will need to do this in order to achieve the cut through the six millimeter MDF. So I'm just quickly jumping in here because after recording all of this, I realized I forgot to reference how important homing is. Now, before you start machining anything, if you turn your machine on, connect it up and just run the homing sequence, what it means is that when you position this spindle in order to start machining this job, you'll have two sets of coordinates. One should be zero, 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 and the other coordinates are the machine coordinates make a note of those coordinates because it means if anything goes wrong it's easy to return back to the exact same spot but for now let's carry on and keep making this spoil board so at this stage we jump over to the computer now it doesn't matter if you're doing this in ugs like i am doing here or whether you're doing it in open builds or candle the process is pretty much the same at this point you want to make sure you click the reset zero button so we're going to click that and we'll see all the numbers have returned to zero down here. This just guarantees that the machine knows this is where we want to start the job we are about to run. Now what we're going to do is load in the job. So we'll come up to the open button. We're gonna head into the 4040 Pro. Obviously all of these files I will provide a link in the description area down below. But for this process, we're gonna use the 60 watt spindle holes, load in the file. And as we can see, it's loaded in the job, which is gonna cut all the holes to allow us to use the inserts that are already in the bed. Now, because the job has already been zeroed and the machine knows this is where we want to start the job, the next thing to do is simply to click play and let it start. So with all the holes machined out, I realized the alignment wasn't perfect, but I have built in a couple of millimeters of allowance. So we have got a bit of wiggle room when placing this board in position. Now, the next thing is to leave your spindle exactly where it is, just simply raise it up. And what we're about to do now is insert the flattening bit. I'm gonna be going with this one today. It is a slightly larger bit, but I think the edges on it are a bit sharper. So we're gonna insert the ER11 quarter inch collet bit and also the flattening bit as well. We're gonna place that in, lower this back down so it just touches the material itself. And we're gonna start the second phase, which is the surfacing. So the surfacing bit is in place and it is just touching the top of the material. Next, bring back the pencil from earlier and just literally scribble all over the bed. You want to make sure there is markings in pretty much every position, especially corner to corner. 
And the reason for this is the next pass we're about to do is called surfacing. And it takes 0.2 millimeters off the top of this bed to guarantee it is flat. Now the crucial part is we need to guarantee that it's cut all over. So when we did the first pass, if we have any pencil marks left, we know it hasn't done it and we will need to do a second pass. So that's why we mark everything up. Now with all the pencil marks on, this touching the um, top of the material, we can jump back over to the computer. So what we're going to do now is open up the second phase, which is the surfacing. So we're going to load this file in. And what we can simply see is it's going to do multiple passes going left to right in order to surface the top of the material. So with the file loaded in, obviously we have now set a new Z height. So we need to come back and click reset zero and make sure all this goes to zero, zero, zero. And again, with that done, the only thing left to do is click play and start this phase of the job. So you will have seen from some of those clips that I was just showing it, this is a very dusty process. The fine MDSF dust does get everywhere. So try and put your machine in some sort of box, a temporary enclosure with a cloth over it, anything basically to minimize how far that dust travels. You can obviously try and fit a dust shoe. This process to surface the board takes about an hour and 40 minutes, especially with this spindle. A bigger spindle is obviously less speed, but with the 60 watt, it has to go quite slow, small increments to get this job done. Now that is the board surface. It's taken off all the pencil marks, which is exactly what I wanted. If you have pencil marks remaining, what you wanna do is come back to the center, lower it down just to touch the top of the material again, and run the process until all pencil marks have gone, and that guarantees your board is perfectly surfaced. Now, I always want to point out my own mistakes. I thought this bit would be okay because of how sharp the the, uh, the blades are on it. Unfortunately, it probably was too big for this size spindle. There's a couple of chunks taken out very early on. This was user error, not tightening the collet up enough to hold the bit. And then there was another chunk taken out a little bit later on. Not quite sure which why this one happened, but ultimately it did leave some divots in the bed. So what I would probably say is use the smaller bits, one like this. The big bit that's in is about an inch and a half in diameter. So maybe stick to no more than one inch. I think this one is about 20 millimeters and it will just guarantee that the spindle can handle it. Now, what we're about to move on to is something that is called tramming. This is about making sure your spindle is perpendicular to the bed to get the best results possible. So I'm gonna reset up and show you what that is now. So James, what is tramming? Well, let me tell you. When you surface your board, there is a good chance you will have some lines going across it from where it is machined. And if you run your finger over it, you may even feel these lines. These are called tramming lines. And what it is a result of is the spindle not being perpendicular to the bed. So for example, even though it looks accurate, it may be leaning a little bit forward, a little bit back, a little bit left or right, maybe even a combination of two of those. And ultimately it will throw out the angle that your bit is actually machining at. So what the process of tramming is, is correcting that to make sure it is perfectly perpendicular to the bed itself. Now this is a tramming jig. If I bring in a spare one, basically that is what it is. And all we have is a one eighth bit in the end of it. And it is sitting in that quarter inch collet that we used from the surfacing bit earlier on. Now the purpose of this jig, it purely magnifies any indiscrepancies in the angle of that spindle. So for example, if it is tilting slightly to the left, as you'll see, that will come up and it'll just give us a better indication of how, um, how off the spindle is. Now, don't worry if you don't have one of these. This is just a 3D printed one. I'll put links in the description area below. But if you want to make one yourself, you can easily do it with two Allen keys. So this is a six millimeter and a five millimeter Allen key, simply just zip tied together, and that will go into the spindle and do exactly the same job. So that's a bit of a cheap, easy method to make one yourself. Now, the way we use this is we want to lower it down until it starts to touch the bed. And what we can do is rotate this around and we can hear it's not touching anything at the front or the sides, but when we get to the back, I don't know if the camera just picks that up or the microphone, sorry. It's just scratching at the back, but it's not scratching at the front. So ultimately, that means our spindle is leaning a little bit backwards. So what we need to do now is to counteract this and tilt it the opposite way. 
Now on this spindle setup, there are a couple of bolts holding everything in place. And depending on which angle you need to move, it will depend on which bolt you adjust to make this happen. Our spindle is leaning backwards, so we need to pull it forwards. So what we are going to do is slacken off the four bolts on either side of this carriage, tilt it a little bit forward and retighten them up. If your spindle is leaning left to right, then you can adjust the four bolts at the back loosen those up, adjust it a little bit, and again, tighten them back up. Now, every time you make an adjustment, you'll want to do this same movement and make sure it is not scraping or ultimately get to scrape consistently all the way around. So what I'm going to do now is slacken these side bolts off, as I say, just bring it a little bit forward to hopefully balance that up and then tighten them back up. It was touching at the back and we have about a millimeters gap here at the front. So ultimately we want to try and even that out and have a half a millimeter gap either side. So let's make those adjustments now. So after slackening off the side bolts and trying to adjust it using these, there wasn't quite enough play to balance it out. So instead what I did was slacken off the four bolts on the back to allow it a little bit of play, and I'll put in little shims of tin foil in the back on the top here. That will just bring the top of it forward, helping to balance it out. Obviously tightened everything back up, and what we can hear now is the bit should catch all the way around. I don't know if you can hear that. So what that means now is the spindle is sitting more perpendicular to the bed and whenever we are machining anything we're going to get better results because we made those adjustments. Now as I say, tilt it left or right, front or back, make sure it is as accurate as you can get it. This process can take a bit of time, it can take 20-30 minutes to get it correctly but I promise you putting the effort in now will get you much better results further on down the line. And if your spoil board is quite bad and your lines are quite prominent on it, once you have done this, run the surfacing program again and you should get a perfectly flat spoil board. And just to prove my point about using the Allen keys, it now touches all the way around. There we are. Now this final step is optional. We are going to engrave an alignment grid into the bed. This will be a series of lines going front to back, left to right, and it will just help us to position our material whenever we're going to start a job. Now to do this, we need to install a V-bit. It doesn't matter what angle, 10, 20, 30. You can even use the ones that come supplied with the 4040 Pro itself. Make sure you install one of those and you'll want to return it back to the center of the bed. You will not have those lines there anymore because we took a surface layer off. So what you'll need to do is just draw the two diagonal lines back in and again, align it back to the center of that cross, lower the spindle down just to the tip of the bit is touching the top of the bed. Back over in UGS, we're gonna come up to the open file and we're gonna load in the grid with the V-bit. Now, as we can see here in the file name, it will do 0.3 millimeters deep. We're going to click open. And it's very faint on screen, but we can just about see the lines are there if we zoom in a little bit more. We'll click reset zero just to be safe, and then we'll start the job. So we've installed the spoil board, we've surfaced it, and we've put an alignment grid on it. Now the grid is just for alignment, there is no measurements to it, it's purely to make sure we can get our material at a nice 90 degree angle. Now obviously that completes the spoil board for today, and as a reminder, all the files are in the description area, so do check them out. I really hope you have found this useful, you should get much better results now as a machining on a freshly surfaced spoil board. If you enjoyed the video as always, please give it a thumbs up and make sure you've subscribed if you haven't done so already. Thank you very much for watching. Final thanks as always goes to my patrons and I'll see you all on the next episode.